Today I'm going to talk about meta tags inside HTML. And meta tags is something we use in order to add extra information to your website. And we already talked about a few of these in the beginning of this course, which was the UTF-8 meta tag we used inside the head tag. And we also talked about the title tag. So we already talked about a few of these. And in this episode, I'm going to get a bit more into a couple of meta tags I think you should include inside your website each time you create a new website. So the first thing I want to mention is that some meta tags can help improve something called SEO inside your website. Now SEO stands for search engine optimization and is something that helps search engines such as Google figure out if your website is relevant to what people search for inside the search field. So it's important that we have good SEO inside a website. And again, like I said, it's only some of the meta tags that can help improve SEO. And I don't want to give you the idea that all these meta tags can help improve the overall SEO of your website. So it's only some of them. Now, there's a lot of different types of meta tags we can use inside a website. Some of them are infamously used or spammed into the website in order to increase SEO, but it's important you don't just include all of them just because you can. You only need to add the ones that you should be using inside the website. So if you have something that you think is relevant to the website, then we can go ahead and add it, but don't just add it just because you can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a couple examples of meta tags that I think are very important for you to include in all websites you create. And the first one I'm going to show is one we already talked about, which is the one called char set. So I'm going to create a meta tag, click tap to get the shortcut. I'm just going to go and delete the name here because we don't need it. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the content because we don't need that as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and include char set. I'm going to set equal to double quotes, UTF eight. And this just defines what kind of characters we're using inside the website and it's something that you should have inside all websites. Now the next one is going to be the title. Now the title is not really a meta tag, but it's something I think is important that you have inside the head tag because it's not really required that you have the title tag. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, this is my website. There we go. Then underneath the char set, we're going to go ahead and include a description tag or a description meta tag. So I'm going to create a meta tag again. And inside the name, I'm going to write description like so. And inside the content attribute, we're going to write the actual value of this meta tag. So we're going to write the actual description inside the content here. So we could say, this is a website that teaches HTML and CSS. And it's very important to point out that we can't have more than 160 characters inside this meta tag. So 160 is the maximum. Okay. Now, one thing about the content inside this specific meta tag is that if you were to, again, SEO optimize your website as good as possible so that people can easier find your website inside Google, then it's a good idea to use keywords that are used often when people search for websites. And you should also keep in mind that we also want to use words that are not that competitive inside the internet. So if I were to use something like tutorials as a word inside my description, then a lot of websites might have a description that says tutorials inside of it. So it's very competitive and you might disappear among all the other websites. So, and again, now I'm sort of getting into SEO, which is not what I want to do in this episode, but just understand that the description here should just explain what exactly your website does and make sure you use words that you want to be found for inside Google. Now, the next one is one that is very important to have inside all websites as well, which is the viewport. Now, the viewport goes in and makes sure that if you were to have any kind of media queries inside your CSS file, you know, where we can make websites responsive, then it's very important that you have this tag inside the head tag. Otherwise, the responsiveness is not going to work inside the browser. So I'm going to write a meta tag again, click tap. And inside the name, we're going to write viewport. Then inside the content, we're going to go ahead and write with equal to device dash with comma space initial dash scale equals one. And again, if you're a bit confused about what exactly this means inside the content attribute, then go ahead and watch the responsiveness episode I made not many episodes ago inside this course here. So these are the required meta tags that I think you should have inside a website. We do, of course, also have some other optional ones that we could use. And again, some could say these are also optional, but I think it's really important you have these inside a website. Most people will tell the same when it comes to meta tags. Now, a couple of optional ones that you could have 
is, for example, keywords. Now, it's very important to point out that when we use the meta tag keywords, this is a tag that is very infamously used inside websites because keywords, again, like inside the description, is used to write keywords for that specific website that you're making. So if this website is about coding and tutorials, I would say coding, comma, tutorials, comma, HTML, comma, CSS, and so on and so on and so on, in order to describe what exactly is inside this website here. And it's very important for me to point out that if you were to use this meta tag to increase SEO inside the website, then it's not gonna make a difference. Google and all the other major search engines out there are not going to care if you have a meta keywords inside your website. Because it's something that people have spammed so many times over the years that it's no longer seen as relevant. So the reason I include this is because you might still have some devices or some kind of machines out there that still counts keywords as a part of the, the meta tag description inside the website. Now, I don't think it's really going to matter in our case. So it's really an optional one you can include if you want to target specific machines out there that might still exist and where it counts. But I don't think it's necessary. The next one I want to talk about is one called author, which describes who actually made this website. So I could say author and inside the content, I could write my name if I wanted to, Daniel Nelson. But again, like I said, this is not really going to have that much of an impact when it comes to SEO or something else. It's just a way to give some information about the website. So these are some of the meta tags that I think are very important to have inside a website before you upload it to the internet. So it's very important that you have the necessary meta tags. Now there's of course a lot more meta tags you could use and I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the description where you can look at some of the different meta tags that we have out there. And I'm also going to go ahead and leave a link to a SEO optimization chart that we use in order to determine SEO optimization for a website. And again, this is not really something that is directly related to meta tags, but if you're curious and you want to look a bit into SEO and how you can improve your chances of showing up inside Google if somebody searches for your website or something related to it, then go ahead and check out that link. So this is all I wanted to talk about in this episode. In the next one, we're going to talk about some good conventions and rules that you should follow when you code websites. And after that one, we're going to talk about how to upload a website to the internet. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.